Hello. In this video, we'll continue of our corporate liquidation discussion. This is corporate liquidation problem two. So in this problem, we have UPIC Fruit Corp, which is a C corporation founded many years ago as a UPIC farm where customers can pick fruit. Strawberry owned 500 out of 1,000 shares of common stock. Her basis in the stock was $1 million. Let's assume that Strawberry is an individual based on the wording. UPIC Fruit Corporation liquidates after paying all its debts and distributes the following to Strawberry. Distributes $2 million of cash and Berry Acre, which was used in, uh, which is real property used in business by UPIC Fruit Corporation. The adjusted basis at distribution of Berry Acre is $3 million and the fair market value of distribution is $10 million. Now, one thing I want to note is there's going to be three different variations of this problem. And what's going to change is the facts regarding Barry Acre. Everything else above Barry Acre is going to stay the same in all three variations. All right. So we have a liquidation. We know that UPIC Fruit Corp is going to liquidate. So the Section 346 issue of whether we have a complete liquidation, that has been resolved. And now we have liquidation. Once we know that complete liquidation is present, there's two possibilities. Either it's going to be the general rules under section 331 and 336, or it's going to be the special liquidation rule for a subsidiary where you have a parent that owns 80 parent corporation that owns 80% or more of the stock. Well, here we have Strawberry that owns 500 out of 1,000, so 50%, and Strawberry is an individual. And even if Strawberry was a corporation, that means that nobody owns 80% or more. Therefore, the special rule does not apply. So we're applying the general rule. This is going to be a general rule analysis for all three variations. So that analysis about the liquidation, the special subsidiary rule, um, non-recognition rule under section 332 and 337, that not applying, that applies to all three variations. We're going to have the general rule of section 331 and 336 to all three variations. So now in the analysis, when we do the variations, we're going to go right to the analysis with respect to strawberries tax consequences, with respect to the complete liquidation general rule, as well as um, UPIC, Fruit Corporation's um, tax consequences, with respect to all three variations, the complete liquidation. All right. So we first determine the consequences of the shareholder. When you look at those checklists, first thing we have, strawberry is the shareholder. So it's going to be, we apply section 331, 336, amount realized minus adjusted basis, which we apply section 1001 rules. The amount realized is going to be the amount that Strawberry actually receives. Here, Strawberry has $2 million of cash, or getting, I'm sorry, $2, $2 million of cash. That's what Strawberry is getting, plus the value of Barry Acre, which is $10 million, $10 million. So the amount realized totals $12 million minus the adjusted basis of the stock given up. Okay. Now if there's liabilities here, we'd add that in there too, because under the general principles of section 1001, it's all property given up. So here the stock, which has a $1 million basis. And if you have liabilities, that's constructive cash paid. So you'd add those together. But here we just have stock given up of $1 million. So strawberries realized gain or loss is going to be $11 million, $11 million gain, which is going to be both realized and recognized. Now, assuming that strawberry has held the stock for more than a year, this is going to be a capital gain. So it's going to be long-term capital gain to strawberry. So those are the consequences to strawberry. What about to you pick fruit corp to you pick? We have to do amount realized minus adjusted basis. Amount realized minus adjusted basis. Okay, the amount realized is going to be as if the um, corporation was selling these assets. Okay, so we have $2 million of cash plus the fair market value of Barry Acre. It's either going to be the greater of fair market value or liability relief. There's no liability relief here, so it's going to be the fair market value. So $2 million is the cash plus the fair market value of Barry Acre. That equals $12 million minus the adjusted basis of those pieces of property. With cash, it's going to be the same $2 million plus 
the $3 million basis and Barry Acre. So that's going to be $5 million. So we subtract those away. That's going to be a $7 million gain that's going to be recognized. The character is most likely going to be, okay, well, this car- this um, cancels out. So there was actually no gain from that, from the cash, as always, right? Face value basis equal the same. The, the gain all comes from the Barry Acre, which was real property used in business, assuming held for more than a year. That's going to be section 1231 gain to the corporation, okay? There's one other issue that we have yet to address, and that is what is the basis that Strawberry takes in the assets? Well, of course, for cash, it's going to be the face value. That's always the case. That's the normal common law principle in tax. But what about Barry Acre? So under section 334, the basis that Strawberry takes is always equal to fair market value. Therefore, this amount's going to be equal to the fair market value which is $10 million. And we have just gone through all the consequences of variation number one. All right, so here's variation two. Again, everything stays the same up until Barry Acre. What changes is the information about Barry Acre, but everything else up here stays exactly the same. So we're going to go through, again, the analysis is still the same. We have a liquidation, right? You pick corporation liquidates. It's not going to be a... Uh, the special liquidation rule because, again, Strawberry owns 50%, so nobody owns 80% or more of the corporation. So it's going to be the general rule. We apply the general rule of Section 331 and 336. We're starting with the tax consequences to Strawberry. So Strawberry, the shareholder, we calculate the amount realized minus the adjusted basis of property given up. So the amount realized is what Strawberry is getting. Strawberry is getting $2 million of cash plus the fair market value of the non-cash property, which is Barry Acre. That's $10 million. So amount realized to Strawberry is $12 million. Minus the adjusted basis of property given up, that's going to be the stock, which is $1 million. Okay, so we have $1 million there for the stock. But we also have something new. Strawberry assumes a $4 million liability on Barry Acre. So Strawberry is also constructively paying cash by taking on the liability. It's as if Strawberry is paying um, you pick fruit $4 million of cash and you pick fruits turning around paying off the bank. That's why we call it constructive cash. So that's going to be a $5 million basis that we subtract away. Strawberry has a $7 million gain. Assuming that the um, stock is held for more than a year, this is going to be long-term capital gain because the stock is treated as capital. Now, the other thing to worry about is the adjusted basis uh, that Strawberry takes in Barry Acre. That's always going to equal the fair market value under Section 334. So that's always going to be the $10 million fair market value. Even if the liability exceeds $10 million, we'll see that in a second. So we've just analyzed all the consequences for Strawberry. Now we worry about you pick fruit, the corporation. So for you pick fruit corporation, it's going to be Amount realized minus adjusted basis under section 331 and 336. The amount realized is the greater of the fair market value or liability relief. So we do have liability relief here. The fair market value of the property, okay? By the way, we also have to worry about the $2 million. The $2 million um, cash given up and the $2 million basis in that. But since it's cash, it cancels out. And all we really have to worry about here whenever you have cash and other property is the other property. So the amount realized, this is going to net, right? Amount realized minus adjusted basis, 2 million minus 2 million net. Really amount realized does include that on the tax return and the adjusted basis. So we would add that on there. But for purposes of this analysis, I'm going to go ahead and cross that off because they're going to net to zero, but they would go in one another for with respect to the corporation. So the fair market value of Barry Acre, that's the other asset, is 10 million. The liability relief is 4 million. So this is going to be a um, a 12 million dollar. It's the greater of, right? So it's going to be 2 million plus 10 million. Amount realized 12 million. Or again, if you netted those, it'd be, t- it'd be 10 million. But on the tax return, you would show 10 million. I'm sorry. On the tax return, you'd show 12 million. The two plus the 10 minus the adjusted basis. The adjusted basis of the property is the 3 million plus the 2 million cash is going to be the um, $5 million. So we still have $7 million is 
the gain just like we had in variation one. So you pick fruit as a $7 million gain, just like variation one. And that's because it still is the fair market value of $10 million. So that is variation two. All right, finally, variation three. This is our last variation. Again, all that changes is the information regarding barrier. Everything else stays the same. So we've got the liquidation, right? So if you're reading this the first time, we have liquidation, complete liquidation, section 346. So then the next thing that to ask is, is this going to be the general rule or is it going to be the special subsidiary liquidation rule, non-recognition rule under 332 and 337? Well, because Strawberry owns 50%, 500 out of 1,000, well, that means nobody owns 80% or more. So the general rule applies. So that means we have section 331 and 336. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to analyze under the general rules. We start with Strawberry. So Strawberry, we've got amount realized minus adjusted basis, just like we've been doing in variation one and two. Amount realized is going to be what's actually received. So that's the $2 million of cash plus the non-cash property of $10 million. So amount realized is $12 million. And then for adjusted basis, is the property given up. That's the basis in the stock, which is $1 million, plus the liability relief. So here, liability relief is $11 million. That's what Strawberry assumes. Look at this. Amount realized $12 million minus adjusted basis $12 million. Strawberry has no gain or loss. No gain or loss. What basis does um, Strawberry take in Barry Acre? The rule is, under Section 334, it's always fair market value. So that means $10 million. We use a $10 million, not the $11 million liability. Huh, interesting. So even though Strawberry is taking on more liabilities in the value, still takes a $10 million value. This would make you question why a shareholder would ever take on property um, that's that and the, and the liability is more than the value. Maybe because they're 100% owner or they control and they have to take on the property because the corporation liquidates. But unfortunately... Um, that's a bad situation to be in when the liability taken on is more than the fair market value. But the rule is always fair market value. All right, so now we consider the tax consequences of you pick Fruit Corp. All right, so we go through our normal amount realized minus adjusted basis, section 331, 336 analysis. Again, general rule. Amount realized, and we did this last time. Remember the cash, we have the 2 million and the $2 million, which they net out, but we're going to still keep that because that still is reported on the tax return when you add up for amount realized on just a basis. We have to do the less, I'm sorry, the greater of the fair market value of the property or the liability assumed on that property. So here the fair market value is $10 million. The liability is $11 million. The greater of those two is $11 million. So the amount realized here is going to be $13 million. So in the last variation, I crossed out the two million, two million, but that you know now I realize that maybe, and I still like added in the amount realized. I crossed it out to show you that they kind of net, but remember on the tax return they actually do get reported with that. So I'm not going to cross it off this time because again it is important. We're going to add that in. So I apologize for last time crossing that off, but I did add it into the amount realized for variation two. So just keep that in mind whenever you're doing the tax return. Adjust the basis. It's the two million dollars cash given up and the three million dollars. Um, in Barry Acre. So look at this. Now we have $5 million basis. We have an $8 million gain, assuming that the property has been held for more than a year since it was used in business. And the gain all comes from this, right? Because the cash doesn't create gain. It's all going to be section 1231 gain, right? And you notice in variation one and two, we have a $7 million gain, right? Because this is both 10 plus two 12 minus 5, 7, but now the liability is greater than the fair market value. Now we have um, more amount realized. Now we have an $8 million section 1231 gain. So this has now gone through, or this problem now has gone through all, all three variations. So you see how things can change, uh, liabilities. You see how these um, rules work together. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please stay tuned for more videos on corporate taxation.